Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about John Henry Jacobson. He went missing November 16th, 1996 from Bismarck, North Dakota. He would be 33 years old today. He went missing when he was five years old. He was last seen with his mother, Sandra Jacobson, which this is her picture. This is his picture, age progressed 30 years. Again, this is her. And this is him when he went missing. John was last seen on November 16, 1996 with his mother, Sandra. The two had made plans to eat dinner at Sandra's mother's home in the vicinity of the 1100 block of University Drive in Bismarck, North Dakota. While on her way, Back to her mother, Sandra called the Bismarck Police Department on her cell phone. She sounded very upset and said she believed satanic ritual abuse was taking place on a farm near Center, North Dakota. She said she called the Bismarck Police Department rather than the Center Police or the Oliver County Sheriff's Office because she didn't trust them. Sandra and John arrived at Sandra's mother's home at 7.30 p.m. Sandra appeared to be having mental health problems, and she agreed to let her mother take her to the hospital. Before she went, however, she wanted to purchase gas. She and John were last seen leaving the residence in Sandra's gray 1990 Honda Civic, which I'm going to show you here. So this is the Honda Civic. Which is accounted for. They did purchase gas, but they never returned to Sandra's mother's home and have never been heard from again. Sandra's mother reported her daughter and grandson missing at 10 p.m. that same day. Sandra's car was found abandoned the next day at the Centennial Beach parking lot near to the Missouri River in Bismarck. There is no sign of John or Sandra at the scene. The driver's side door of the car was wide open. The keys were in the ignition and Sandra's purse was sitting on the front seat. Its contents were undisturbed. Police searched the beach in the river and found a shoe that might have been John's. Strong river currents and severe weather hampered the search efforts and investigators could not search the river as thoroughly as they would have liked to. Sandra separated from her second husband, Alan Jacobson, John's father, three months before she disappeared. She was living in a trailer in Center, North Dakota, with John and her 16-year-old son by a previous marriage, Spencer Nostrum. Sandra believed she was in the process of a divorce, which was being handled by Alan, and she was anxious about a possible custody battle. However, Alan didn't mention the divorce to the police when he was interviewed, and when the authorities investigated, they learned there was no divorce pending. Alan stated he was away on a business trip in Missouri between November 16th, the day his wife and son disappeared, and November 18th. Authorities have been unable to confirm his alibi. However, Alan was not completely cooperative in the search for his wife and son, and he refused to submit a DNA sample. He claimed he and Sandra were trying to reconcile and has signed up for couples counseling, but records show he had never attended any counseling appointments. After his wife and son disappeared, Alan went to Sandra's trailer in center and removed most of the items inside, including clothes and food. The trailer was never searched by police either before or after Alan 
cleared it out. Although Sandra's family said she kept a detailed daily journal, Alan said he did not find it inside her home. The journal has never been located. Spencer stated he saw his mother's wedding rings in a change container inside Alan's home just days after Sandra went missing. And he didn't know why Alan would have had the rings, but he ha he wasn't sure if his mother had been wearing them when she was last seen. When questioned, Alan said he didn't take the rings out of Sandra's trailer. He believed she'd left them with him when they separated. In May 1997, six months after the Jacobsons disappeared, a child's shoe was found near the river in Centennial Park. Alan said he thought the shoe might be John's, but John's older brother and his grandmother both said they did not recognize it and thought it was too large to fit John's feet. Just hours before she went missing, Sandra attempted to call her ex-husband, Vernon Nostrum, but he didn't answer the call. Vernon was subs subsequently interviewed about his ex-wife and her son's disappearance. He told police that during the, his marriage to Sandra, she had been fascinated with the idea of the end of the world and had made a pact with him. If it looked like the world was going to end, both of them would meet up and jump off the memorial memorial bridge together. The bridge is near where Sandra's vehicle was located after she went missing. However, Vernon said Sandra later concluded that suicide was a bad idea. She thought it would condemn the victim's soul to walk the earth forever, never to enter heaven. He passed a polygraph about Jacobson's case and was never considered a suspect. Vernon was himself the victim of a homicide in 2005. He was run over by his own car and left to die in a ditch on a maintenance road north of Tuttle, North Dakota. His murder remains unsolved and there's no indication is connected to his missing wife's case. One theory is that Sandra murdered John and took his, her own life by going into the river but there is no hard evidence to support this. Police stated that there is no evidence pointing to foul play in the Jacobson's case, and they have never had a suspect. Sandra was employed with the North Dakota Department of Transportation at the time of her disappearance. The Jacobson's case remains unsolved. They were declared legally dead sometime after their disappearances but they still are considered missing. So again, this is little John Henry Jacobson. And this is his age progress photo for 30 years. And I'm going to click on, oh no, they don't have an age progress photo for Sandra in this. I'm going to check the Charlie project just to make sure before I sign off. But please hit the like button, comment below. This seems like another doomsday um, case, which there hasn't been any evidence to say so, but the ex-husband seems like, you know, they made a pact. Could this his parents be because of that pact? Um, what maybe we'll never know, or maybe hopefully, Getting their case back out there, this will help investigators find out. Again, thank you all for watching. Remember to hit the like button. Let's get this case back in the algorithm and see if we can light their way home. Bye, guys.